Hello, I'm Jim, and this video came as a request from someone in my Discord community. It's kind of a follow-on to one of the previous lessons that I had recorded. So in one of the previous lessons, I made this system. It's a simple interact system that you can use. So here you could see that I interact with that, and this one prints the name of the actor. This one will destroy the actor, and this one will make the actor float up. And then there was a fourth one that opened a door and you can see I have these two blue doors in the level. And the request was, how do I sign it so that the door has a keypad so that the door doesn't just open automatically when I press a button. So here I've made this so when I interact here, this keypad widget will pop up and then I can input a combo if I put in the wrong combo, for instance, if I put in 4444, it will not open. It's not unless I put in the correct combo that the door will open. And then here I can actually close the door by interacting with it. And then in the inside, maybe we have a different combo. So if I try to put the same combo in here, nothing will happen. And then if I put in the correct combo here, the door will open again. So a lot of flexibility with the system. It's a way to create some interesting puzzles maybe for your game. And I'll just do a quick breakdown of how this all works. Now I'm gonna go through this fairly quickly. And the intent here is I don't wanna get caught up too much on the specifics. I did live stream the entire creation of this system. And there's a lot of input from the people watching the stream on how to simplify it and how to make it a little bit better. So if you're interested in seeing how we went about creating this, I can put a link to the live stream in this video and that way you can go watch it. And it's, it'll be a little bit slower and a little bit more methodical and you can kind of see the thought process. But for the purpose of this video, I wanted to keep it pretty straightforward. So I'm just gonna go quickly through how all of this works. And one of the things that I'm not gonna do in this video is go over how all of our interact systems work. So that was in that previous video. If you wanna understand how the interact system is working, you can go and watch that video, but we won't be spending too much time on that. We're gonna be focusing mainly on this door switch, the door, and then this keypad widget, which we created on the live stream. Now, this was a way that we just kind of hacked it together really quickly. There was a recommendation from one of the viewers to do things a little bit cleaner. So I actually went about and did that here. So this one is just a little bit cleaner. So this is the one I'm gonna use for this video. So if you watched the live stream, this will not be on there. You'll see actually the creation of this one instead. So I'll first start by showing that when we walk up to the keypad, we get this interact widget. We can see that the door will open when we interact with it alone. But when we interact with this keypad, the keypad will show up and this is a widget. And the way we're doing that is by calling our interact function. So this was set up through an interface called BPI interact. And when we interact with this, the first thing we want to do is show our mouse cursor and set the input to UI only. And this will allow us to use our mouse to select the different buttons. The next thing we're gonna do is just create a widget of type keypad two, and we're gonna add that to the viewport. So that's just handling this first part here. And that's how we're getting that to come up and that we can interact with it. And here's that keypad two widget. We can see that we have an image in the background just to make everything kind of fade away a little bit. And these are all of type WBP button. And what we've done is we've created a system to where you can have them kind of in this keypad matrix. So I have a vertical box, which holds the entire thing. There's a text box at the top, which is where we're gonna see the combo that the player is inputting into it. And then we have four horizontal boxes here that are holding all of the individual buttons. And then just some spacers in between everything just to make it look a little bit cleaner. Now in WBP button, there's not much going on here. So I'll just go over it really quickly. And all we have here on our WP button is just that when that button is clicked, we're gonna get all widgets with interface and our keypad does have an interface called WBP keypad button. We're gonna go through each of those. So there only should be one in the level at a time. And we're just gonna call button pressed and this interface takes an input of an integer. So we'll just pass in the button number. 
and button number is set as instance editable. And this allows each of these buttons on our keypad to have a different variable. You can see it here, button number. So this one's gonna be two and so on. Now we want to have the keypads update the text. So we actually just link that to that button number as well. And that way, as soon as we create the keypad, each of those buttons will update to its own number. And again, we're just calling this button press interface on our keypad widget. Now on the keypad widget, here's that interface. We're just gonna take that button variable that we pass in, we're gonna make it a string, and then we're gonna call this function update combo. And here in update combo, we're gonna take that input. And the first thing we wanna do is just see if we've already reached the max number of characters that can be in our passcode. And one thing to note is that when we're creating this keypad widget, we're taking a reference to self on this door switch and we're passing this in as a variable to our widget. And this allows us to reference the door switch on this widget after we've created it. This is important because here we need to get access to that door switch and then get access to a variable on there called passcode. So this ultimately is the code that the player needs to guess in order to open the door. And here in update combo, we're just gonna get this passcode and we're gonna get the length. And we're gonna see if the length of our combo is less than that length. And if it is, it'll allow us to continue to input additional numbers. And really what this is doing is it's just making sure that the player can't endlessly keep putting in numbers. It's essentially going to stop them at whatever the maximum number of characters are allowed are. But this also allows some flexibility so you can set different lengths of combos for each door. And here, what we're going to do is we're going to take our input that we got back here when we press that button, and we're going to take our current combo and we're gonna append it and then set that to the new combo. So, so far we can open the widget and we can select any number that we want and it will create the combo here. And this is just always gonna be reading from whatever that combo is. So there's two buttons left that we need to talk about. The first one is the star key, and this is just gonna clear out whatever the combo is. And the second one is this pound key, and that's going to accept whatever the player has input as the combo, as the passcode. So if we type two, 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 we'll notice that the door does not open. And these are those two functions. So this button clear one is the star key, and we can just see that it's taking that combo variable and it's setting it back to an empty string. The enter one, which is the pound key, the first thing we're doing is we're setting our mouse cursor back to hidden, and we're setting the input mode back to game. And then the next thing we wanna do is get that door switch, and we're gonna call an event called trigger door and we're going to pass in the combo that we made on this widget this trigger door event is going to take that combo and it's going to check is it the same as the passcode and if it is we'll call an event dispatcher called open door which is going to cause all of the doors that are linked to this keypad to open up and if you watch that interact system video you may have already seen this we did make some modifications to it during the live stream just to allow some more flexibility so I'll just go through those. First thing we're doing is we're getting all actors of class door switch, and this is for every door. And then each door switch has a switch number and each door has a door number. And essentially what this allows us to do is link up a door switch with a door. And this way we can use it multiple times throughout a level and have different switches open up different doors. So we're essentially finding the switch and the door that have the same number. And then we're gonna bind open door to whatever door switch had the same number. Down here, this is mostly the same. So when we call open door, we're gonna use this timeline to set the relative rotation of our hinge. The only difference here is when we get to the finished, we're gonna look at the direction that this timeline was moving. And if it was moving forward, we're gonna set this variable is locked to false. And if we're moving backward, we're gonna set the variable back to true. And this allows us to relock the door once we close it. Another change to this is that I did put the interact widget on the door itself. And this is so that when the door is open, we can interact with it and we can close it again. And maybe you need this for your game. It really depends on whatever you're trying to make. So this allows us to have a system where once we input the passcode and we open the door, we can also interact with it again and close it. 
Now I just want to review a couple more things. The first thing is we have two doors in our level and we can see here that when I put the correct combo in, they both open when I put the combo in. But if we wanted to say have a different keypad for this door maybe, all we'd need to do is change the door number and the keypad number to a different number. We can also change the passcode to something like 1111. And then now when I put the combo into this door, the second door should not open. But when I put in the combo to this door, this door will open. So this allows a lot of flexibility. You can reuse this multiple times in the same level to set different doors to different keypads. And the other thing is I have a keypad in here where I can get locked into the room and there's another keypad, but this one has a different combo. So if I put the combo of one, two, three, four in here, that doesn't work. I need to put in a different combo, two, three, four, five, and now that'll open. And the way that's working is that this keypad is set to switch number one with a combo of one, two, three, four. And this door is set to door number one. So these two are linked. Now this switch number is also set to one, but the passcode here is set to two, three, four, five. So we can have different passcodes for different doors. We could have multiple keypads for the same door. We could have multiple doors on the keypad and it allows a lot of flexibility. So hopefully you learned something from this video. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask in the comments or you can head to my Discord and ask me directly there. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you in my next video.